Now, into interpretation of contracts, okay? In the interpretation of contracts, uh, this uh, would pertain to the determination of the meaning of the words or terms uh, used uh, by the parties in the contract. Okay? How uh, should the words, the terms used be interpreted? Okay? Pag lawyer na kayo, you would uh, definitely uh, be in a scenario where both sides would interpret the same contract in totally different ways. Okay? Siyempre, ang interpretation mo would always be consistent with the interest of your client. But in the interpretation of contracts, what if the terms of the contract are clear as to their meaning? Therefore, the literal meaning of the stipulation shall control? The answer is not necessarily, okay? The terms of the contract may be clear, but the terms of the contract may not reflect the real intention. What will prevail still will be the intention of the parties, okay? The question here would be, how would you know the real intention if the terms of the contract are clear as to their meaning? Ito ang meaning ng kontrata eh. If you just read the words, the terms used, ito ang kontrata, ito ang terms. But how would you know that those terms do not reflect the real intention? The law also would provide for the manner of determining whether that goes into the intention of the parties, which is to consider the contemporaneous and subsequent acts of the parties. Okay? Uh, one good case here, uh, decided by the Supreme Court, is the case of citizen surety versus Court of Appeals. Okay? There were a few contracts entered into. Mayroong uh, sale to secure the fulfillment of the sale. Mayroong bond issued by citizen surety. Tapos may indemnity agreement. Mayroong ding uh, deed of assignment. The issue here pertains to the deed of assignment because the principal debtor here in relation to the sale, the buyer, claimed that the deed of assignment was by way of the shon in pago, which extinguished its obligation under the indemnity agreements. Okay? But really, was the deed of uh, assignment a form of the shon in pago? When the Supreme Court considered the subsequent acts of the parties, Ito ang mga subsequent acts. After the execution of the deed of assignment, this debtor continued to pay. Therefore, was the deed of assignment a form of dasyon? Mukhang hindi. Because if there was really dasyon in pago, then the obligation must have been extinguished. And then when, why would he pay? But more than that, not only did the debtor continue to pay, he executed a real estate mortgage in favor of the creditor. So why would he execute a real estate mortgage if his obligation was already extinguished by way of the shun? Does the Supreme Court rule that the deed of assignment obviously does not partake the nature of the shun in pago? In fact, it was only a form of security arrangement. Okay? In the case of uh, Limi Luya versus Court of Appeals, the parties here entered into a contract of sale and it was stipulated in the contract that the price is deemed paid upon the signing of the contract. Despite that stipulation, an action was filed by the seller claiming that the price had not yet been paid. Eh, nakalagay sa deed of sale, deemed paid upon signing, inapirmahan na ang deed of sale. Di ba tama that the price must have been paid? Or is it possible that there was such a stipulation but the price really had not yet been paid? Well, it is possible. Di ba? Magaling lang ang buyer. Pinilagay niya sa deed of sale na paid upon signing but after the signing of the contract, he may have told the seller, sandali lang ha, after getting the goods, kung mga jewelries lang, ito madali. Sandali lang, pupunta lang ako sa ATM. Okay? After one year, wala pa, hindi pa bumabalik, di ba? So, despite the fact that the deed had already been signed and it, there was a stipulation that deemed paid upon signing, the price may not have been paid. But in this case, was the price paid already? The Supreme Court again considered the subsequent acts of the parties, the contemporaneous and subsequent acts, in determining whether the price in fact had already been paid. Of course, it considered first the fact that after the signing of the deed of sale, 
yung mga delivery orders have been delivered to the buyer. With this delivery order, in fact, the buyer was able to obtain the goods from the seller. So sabi, with this, apparently the price had already been paid. Bakit magdi-deliver ang seller ng delivery orders? Why would the seller allow the buyer to obtain the goods if the price had not yet been paid? Pero personally, tingin ko it is possible. Mabait lang ang seller. Despite the fact that there was a stipulation, he still allowed the buyer to obtain the goods even if the price had not yet been paid. But I would consider another fact proven by the buyer as the most telling of all these facts that in fact the price had already been paid. Magaling ang abogado ng buyer. He required certain documents of the corporation to be presented, to be brought to the court. And in these documents, documents as to receivables ng company, there was nothing mentioned in the account receivables as to the price to be paid by the buyer. In other words, from the document of the seller himself, it appears that the price had already been paid. Otherwise, that amount should have been entered into as an account receivable. Di ba? So, because of that, the Supreme Court ruled, considering the subsequent acts of the parties, the court ruled that there was, in fact, already payment of the price. There was another reason, of course, cited by the Supreme Court in relation to another rule, that if there is an ambiguity in a contract, the interpretation of obscure words or stipulations in a contract shall not favor the party who caused the obscurity. Ikaw ang gumawa ng kontrata, if there is an ambiguity, it will be construed against your interest. In that case, Limiluya versus Court of Appeals, it was the seller who prepared the contract. And therefore, the Supreme Court also cited as a basis to its conclusion that since the corporation was the one who prepared the contract, any ambiguity in the contract shall be construed against the interest of the party who caused the obscurity. In the same manner, in the case of Eastern Shipping versus Margarine Verkauf, in relation to the interpretation of a provision in the Bill of Lading as to the extent of the liability of the common carrier uh, as a result of damage caused to the goods of the shipper. Since there was an ambiguity and the Bill of Lading obviously is prepared by the common carrier itself, the ambiguity was resolved against the interest of the common carrier, obviously in favor of the shipper. Okay? Now, finally, this specific scenario. What if a parcel of land was the object of a contract of sale and the subject matter, the object was described as this parcel of land located at the corner of Jose Rizal and Bonifacio streets, for example, in one city. Now, it turned out that as would normally happen in an intersection, there would be four corners. What if the seller had at least two parcels of land, dalawang corners sa kanya, ilalo na kung apat, lahat sa kanya? And the buyer would claim, I bought this particular parcel of land. But the seller would say, no, I sold the other parcel of land at the other corner. And even if you uh, use the other rules on interpretation of contracts, the ambiguity could not be resolved. How would this uh, obscurity or ambiguity be resolved? The problem pertains to a doubt cast upon the principal object of the contract. And in such a way that it cannot be known what may have been the intention of the parties, the law provides that the contract is void, should be considered as null and void. Okay. Now, on the other hand, in a sale of a car, a specific car, uh, modified, in an agreement where A obliges himself to deliver and transfer ownership over a car, a determinate car, and when that car was delivered to B, B noticed that the stereo was no longer there. It was removed by A. Claiming that he is entitled also to the stereo, he demanded for the delivery of the stereo to him. A, of course, claimed that he is not obliged to deliver the stereo to B. Sa kanya dapat daw ang stereo. Who is correct? Si A or si B? Now, the answer depends on the nature of the contract or transaction as to cause. 
whether the contract is gratuitous or the transaction is an onerous transaction. Because if the transaction entered into between A and B is an onerous transaction like a sale, the rule that should be applied in case the other rules and interpretation of contracts are not applicable, the rule that should be applied is the greatest reciprocity of interest. It should be settled in favor of the greatest reciprocity of interest. Okay? This would be obviously true because in the problem, pag onerous, this could be a sale. And the uh, scenario would pertain to an ambiguity which refers only to an incidental circumstance. Hindi naman yung principal object itself, but only an incidental circumstance kasi stereo lang naman. Again, the law would provide for the application of the greatest reciprocity of interest. But if the transaction was a gratuitous transaction like a donation, the law provides that the least transmission of rights and interest shall prevail. A scenario could be a donation. A donated the car to B. Should B be entitled to the stereo as well? Mukhang hindi, di ba? Kasi donation lang naman ito eh. B did not pay for the car. In other words, if he would really demand for the delivery of the stereo also, ang tawag sa kanya ay swapang, di ba? Dinonate na nga sa kanya, binigay na nga ang kotse, pati ba naman stereo uh, pag didiskitahan pa niya. So the law would provide that such would pertain to the donor under the principle of the least transmission of rights and interest. Okay?